Which one is the You got the you got the uh YouTube running yet? Yeah. Okay. This one this one's fifth fifty nine, this one's six fifty eight. Which one are we gonna start? <clears throat> go in there and just do what you wanna do. We'll All start right. when you say go. All right. All right, we're gonna do it after the commercial. All right, let's go. Hello, everybody, and thanks to listening to 99.9 WUCC, the voice of truth. I am Pastor Steve Hall. I am the host for the program called In the Last Days, and you are entering our program right now. So welcome to In the Last Days with Pastor Steve Hall and Radio Pastor Isaac. RPI, it is good to see you, my brother, back in God's house. Man, it is good to be back, especially seeing you, brother. You're my brother, so... We like blood brothers here. We 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 just like what my mama. We blood brothers. We are blood brothers. <laughs> we blood brothers. We got the man. same blood from Jesus same flowing in these bodies. Jesus. We just different color, but the same blood. I don't even know if we different color anymore. No, we we, we <laughs> things going on. Everybody looking like if you ain't for that agenda, you you just out. Boy, I tell you, it's it's it's, it's been a blessing, man. I, and I'm excited about what God is doing. I got another one of those uh things. I ain't gonna say things, but uh uh. A God, word from the Lord. Yeah, God gave you revelation, too. You're going to tell us about a dream in a little while. Yeah. We're not going to tell it now. No. We're going to let David Wilkerson do a little preaching so he'll set the stage for us. But you got a dream that is amazing, and God, it's a God dream. It's a God it's dream. It's not just you dreaming because mm-hmm. you had indigestion. Nope. This is a God <laughs> dream. Yeah, I got a, uh, I got a dream, and God spoke to me, and it's, and it's something that's, you know, that, you know, I, I take very, very seriously. When it comes to the things of God, I don't play. You know, um, I I don't play it with at God at all. But before we get started and everything, we're gonna have to tell you a couple of ways that to listen to it. Cause we tend to forget about this sometimes. Yeah, this, tell them how to listen. Keep listening because they don't want to cut this one off. No, nah, y'all don't want to cut this one off. Well, a couple of ways you can listen to it is you can go to www.cwchrist.com, and if you look on the right hand part of that screen, you will see a live button. That's right, we're live and on the radio. From here all the way down to Budapest, we everywhere. We on we 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 all up in China and Russia. We on the internet, and that's one of the biggest things. So that's like if you walk to the grocery store, and of course you listen to WC, WCC ninety nine point nine, and you're like, listen, I don't want to lose my place. So you take your phone or your tablet, put it on your uh, get your earbuds in, or play it out loud, just walking in, and continue to hear us. And if you are listening to us on the twenty, what day is this? If you if you hear this on the 26th, 27th at 2 p.m., then it's you, a replay. Yeah, replay, and we ain't going to take no calls in. You ain't going to be able to call and nothing like that. We get probably more calls during that time during the day than anything. So that means you listen to a rebroadcast. So, but thanks for listening to the broadcast yes. and the rebroadcast. Amen. All right. So I got this. This is one of the things that I was sitting there listening to. I was telling Pastor Steve, and that's when God began to speak to me, and it's called. David Wilkerson, it's time to get right with God. It's time to get right with God. And I'm telling you now what I believe the Holy Spirit is saying. Holy Spirit, only you can fill this house with your presence and make Christ real. Only you can speak to the depths of the soul. I'm going to speak to those who know their sinners, to those who have backslidden, to those, O oh Lord, who have been growing cold and indifferent to the call of God and the things of Christ. Oh God, come and speak. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. Paul the Apostle said, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. He said, This is a day of mercy. This is a day of grace. This is the time for you to get right with God and deal with this mercy. Paul said, Don't receive the mercy in vain. Don't turn away from 
the gentle call of Jesus to come back to his arms. Now, this is a message of grace, but it's also a warning. Now, today, is the day of salvation. Jesus warned that in the last days, many are going to grow cold. The scripture says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. And he said, this is going to happen in a time he called the beginning of sorrows. And folks, we're living in the beginning of sorrows. We're living in a time of unprecedented greed, rampant iniquity, sexual perversions beyond description. And Jesus said, in those times, in the beginning of sorrows, many hearts are going to grow cold. And he said, they're going to turn away. I hear people say, I can get right with God any time I choose. I'll know the time. I'm not ready yet, and I'll know the time. I, I have some things I want to accomplish in my life, and I have friends, and I want to enjoy myself. And when I'm ready, I'll come to God. Now, there's some problems with that, because coldness leads to hardness. That's what the scripture says. He said, there will come a great falling away. And those who receive not the truth are going to fall under what the scripture calls the deceivableness of sin. It's so deceptive, it can harden a cold heart. I know people that have hardened their hearts because they won't give up friends and they won't listen to me. I know scripture and they seem to beyond hearing of the grace and the mercy of God. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. If you have a hard heart, it's not going to work. You're not going to listen. You're not going to hear. Hardness, a heart that is beyond the influence of the gracious pleading of Christ. They place themselves beyond the pleadings of the Holy Spirit. It's a self-imposed exclusion with no intention of ever obeying the call of the gospel. No intention ever. No matter what preachers preach, no matter how the Lord himself could come down in the flesh, the Bible said, and they, many would not believe. A refusal to accept the mercy of Christ. A person who keeps putting distance between himself and God. Now is the time to get right with God because this generation has lost, secondly, has lost the fear of God. There's no fear of God left in the land. This is what the Bible says. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from their evil. From the fear of the Lord. Years ago, I was invited to speak at a gathering at Yale University. And I was informed before the meeting that a group of demonstrators had come and with signs. They had read something I preached from Romans about homosexuality, I suppose. And they said they're going to demonstrate it at a certain time. And I, I said, Lord, what do I preach? And the Lord said, preach your message on hell. Hell, what's it like and who's going there? And friends, oh, I wasn't halfway through when a holy hush, when a presence of the Holy Ghost came. I'll never forget it. There was a well-known writer who was writing uh, there to write a report at the meeting. And he said, my pen sounded loud. There was no demonstration. The fear of God came on their campus. You, you see, man can't get away from that nagging sense. And that's the Holy Spirit who says there's death and then there's judgment. There's a day of standing before God to give an account. And the Bible makes it very, very clear. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And there's a day we're going to have to give an account. And there's a hell. And, and Jesus said there's, there's a hell of, of fire and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, a darkness that can be felt. And there's a hell.
But, but you see, man has to invent a gospel where there's no God. And that's where we are in the United States and around the world right now. No hell, no heaven. This is it. So just live it up and have your fun. You see, the devil brings in a Jesus that is tolerant. That's the key word right now, tolerance. Tolerant toward same-sex marriage. Tolerant toward everything. There's no such thing as sin. There's no such thing as a sinner. There's no such thing as judgment. And so they buy into that. Young people are buying into that. Many Christian young people are saying we need to be more tolerant. And so they too believe that same-sex marriage is, is okay with me. But now the Spirit speaks in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hard iron. It's time to get right with God because Jesus is coming very soon. He's at the door. No one knows the time or the hour. But Jesus told what's going to happen prior to his coming. It gives very clear evidence. Jesus said there'll be wars, there will come false Christ. But don't be terrified because the end is not yet. Then nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs in the heaven. And then shall they see the Son of Man come in a cloud with power and great glory listen to what he said when men's hearts fail them for fear and for looking upon those things that are coming on the earth it's one of the surest signs when everywhere there's fear and men's hearts are failing them just watching those things that are coming on the earth we don't hear much about the coming of Christ in modern Christianity we don't hear it anymore I grew up where every Sunday in church this was preached. I grew up believing Jesus could come at any moment. When I first came to New York, that's what I preached on the streets. Jesus is coming, get ready. Beware of those who say in their heart, my Lord delays his coming. Scripture said we are all gonna be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. Therefore, beloved brethren, be you steadfast, be unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. He said, no, you don't stop working, you don't stop praying, you don't stop doing anything. You keep moving on, but with this always in mind, looking to and hasting toward the coming of Christ. Blessed are those servants who are on alert when he comes. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord will find watching when he comes. And if he comes in the second watch, be ready. For the Son of Man is coming in an hour when you don't think, when you don't expect him. There comes a time God in his mercy says, get up out of the dirt. Make a move. Make a move. I'm pleading with you. Please hear what the Spirit is saying. Turn back, go back today. Now is the time to make it right. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to come right now. Speak directly into your heart. It's time to come humbly to God and say, Jesus, I hear you. And here's the call. Well, it's time to come to Jesus. It's time to let the Holy Spirit do that great work in your heart that yes. you have been avoiding. Many people are planning on getting right, Brother RPI. Yeah. They've got a plans on one day. You know, that's the good people. Yeah. They're planning on getting right. And then you got those people. They're not going to get right because they don't even believe they'll answer for judgment. They don't. they don't believe they'll answer in a judgment before God. They don't believe their sins will ever be reckoned for. That they will ever have to try to explain anything to anybody. They're living carefree and careless. But today we want to talk about judgment. 
and God has given you a lot of revelation about yes. judgment in which when we were talking in the green room, yeah. God is filling my mind up with the same things. And, uh, you know, recently I've been talking about repenting. I can't get it off my mind. I don't get it off my heart. I was repenting again for myself and uh, others today. I was repenting, brother, again, again and again I'm repenting. Ooh. And you know why? I see judgment. I see it. That's right. It's all, somebody says, oh, judgment's coming. No, y'all, look, it's it, already here. It's can't, already here. Can't you even see the division that is in our country over a football kneeling or, or, or standing and, and the rebellion? And all of these aren't even the main thing. Nope. These are all distractions to keep us fussing and fighting and further divide us one from another. I mean, it's so obvious to me when I look at the world, the world is careless and fearless against God. They don't fear God. They don't. They don't care that they're killing babies and we haven't stopped killing babies. And they don't care that we're on the brink of war with North Korea and tens of thousands yeah. of people are getting ready to die that, in war. Wow. They don't care. They don't. They think that the world is going to be a party and they're going to get the party right on. And the financial systems of the world are crashing around us. And we see the morals of society decaying before our eyes every day. Every day, brother, I can see something that says, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe they say that. I one, can't believe it. One of the things that I, I was listening to, uh, something called True News, and they were saying that when the Civil War started, the people thought it was just like a movie. They say they would go up on the hill and, and watch and get picnics and watch it. But when they saw the horror of yeah. the world, people getting their arms and legs blowed off, it traumatized them. Yes, that's and, exactly and, right. And, and this, this in America, we think that's, oh, we're going to fight no crap. It's cool. You don't know that's going to affect us. It's going to affect us because we're going to be responsible for killing many. And listen, don't you think that little country can't punish a big Man, country? Come on now. God will take a little old, tiny person, a little tiny nation, and he will punish a powerful people and powerful nation. Look at ISIS. Mm -hmm. Prime example. That's exactly right. A little bitty terror organization. And, and exponentially grows and we still haven't still with have them and, and we still have won the war and we left all that stuff for them we left that we actually we left that stuff a lot of the equipment they took was equipment. ours and all they did was just recycle what we used and use it against yeah. us and other nations you know um pastor Steve was talking you know and i was telling him what god had showed me when he's when i was at work and i was listening to this this song well it wasn't a song uh dave wilson and it's called it's a time to get right with God. And as I began to listen to it, it broke me. I mean, I, I, I started crying. I mean, I just broke down crying, you know, and I was asking God, please forgive me, Lord. Lord, Lord let me Turn repent. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me repent, Lord. You know, you go. I, 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 God, forgive me. And God began to speak to me. And God said, son, he said, I'm bringing judgment now. He said, I'm bringing judgment now on America. He said, I don't try, I don't send things. He said, I am bringing judgment. I said, Lord, no, wait a minute, Lord, just don't. He said, no, I'm finna judge these people because they don't have no interest in me. I am the creator. I don't want to give them breath. I wake them up every day, but I'm finna judge. And I said, God, please don't judge them, Lord. Let, 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 me, let me just get a chance to try to do something. God, let me, let me get talked to them. Let me get people together. God said, no. He said, son, it's judgment time. Judging is coming now. I'm judging right now. And I begin to cry. I said, God, please, please, Lord, let, 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 just let me try. Let me get the brothers again. Let me get somebody. Let us share. God said, no, it's too late. I said, God, what about the souls? What about the people, Lord? Please, God. If I got the, I said, God, if I had to wear sackcloth and, and, and get across and walk down watch the road and tell people, I'd do it, God. Please, God said, son, it's too late. He said, I'm bringing my judgment is now. And I began to see people hurting and, and their souls. And it, and it just ate me. And I cried. I mean, I cried like a baby. I cried in my truck. I mean, I literally cried, repenting. God, forgive them. Forgive me, Lord. Let me be right. Let them be right. And God said, I can't allow this to happen no more. I said, here it is. I'm sending storms. And I'm sending my everything in the Bible I say that I'm sending. Earthquake and dire places. Rumors of wars and everybody getting upset about a football. None of the things of Christ. He said they just lose distraction. Distraction and got them so far away. 
A war can get ready to happen over here in North Korea, and nobody cares. And all we worrying about what happened, who kneeling. I listen. I, God say, what about me? What about the ones that was on that field praying for me, and they ridiculed them? They they cut them down. They chopped them down. What about those ones? And here it is. I'm bringing judgment on the land. I'm trying to prepare my people, and they're nowhere being ready. I'm talking about the church. Where was the church for Pastor White that played for the Tampa Bay when he prayed on the field? And they really can. Where's the church for Tim Tebow when he prayed? God said, I'm finna bring judgment on this land. He said, I'm finna drop judgment on this land. Show these people that I'm God. And I'm telling y'all, my friend Michael Davis had a dream where he saw demons, fallen angels, falling from the heavens coming to earth. He said that they kind of look like, like he meant Skeletor. He said it kind of looked like that. And he said he saw them demons falling, coming to the earth. And I'm like, Lord, what? what? And, and God said, when you hear there's rumors of wars, and 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 and, and he, I'm not quoting the scripture right, but the rumors of war, but he said, these just the beginning of sorrows. This just the beginning. And I plead with God. I say, God, just give us a chance. God, we can do it right. God said, it's too late. It's too late. They don't care. They're not calling me. They're not magnifying me. So I'm bringing my judgment and I'm finna bring it swift and I'm gonna bring it hard. All this stuff going in the world, we don't even care. Puerto Rico got wiped out. They say they're back to the 1800. No power, no nothing. People waiting in line eight hours just to get gas. All these fires. God said, all the fires I'm sending, I'm trying to send this world a sign to repent, to tell America to repent, and they're not doing it. They don't care. So God said, my judgment is going to be swift and hard. I had a dream. I had a dream about, I saw locusts in my house. It was everywhere. I, I was trying to tell my wife, let's get this thing out of here. What is this? Where is this coming from? And God said, this is my judgment I'm going to bring on America. Because they don't repent. They don't care. All the abortion. All the homosexuality. All this, this money that we stole from other countries. Slavery. The way we treated people. Unjustice in America. God said, I'm bringing judgment. And I'm just sick and tired of it. And he would talk about the church. I'm not. He said the world is already lost. But the churches are not doing as I asked them. The church is not preaching the gospel. They're not sharing my faith. All we doing is being distractive, getting our mind on other stuff and not of him. What does it take? Tell me, what does it take for us as Christians to go out and, 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 and teach this gospel, share this gospel? God said, America, I'm going to have to repent. All the things that America has done, all the things that took place. I mean, going all the way from the beginning of, from the beginning of America started to the end of time. Now, God said, it's going to be judgment. He said, I don't judge every other nation. But this nation is going to be judged. God said, I reign on the just and the unjust. And I begin to cry and weep. I mean, I cried and weep for the lost souls. I mean, I cried my eyes out, praying, asking God, please, God, just give me. God, just let God said, no. I mean, I'm like, God. I mean, I seen low, this, these, I don't know what kind of book. And when these locusts was in my house, they were stinging. I said, ouch. I said, what is this, baby? I, said, I don't know. I thought you said it wasn't stinging. And they began to, and they was like one and four. No, I had hundreds. My whole house was filled. Filled with like these locust-like bugs. My children fighting them off. And I'm trying to grab them. And they all stinging them. And, and we just all call them, God, please, God. We're sorry. Repent. God says, it's too late, son. It's too late. It's too late because we so distractive. We didn't even take time to worship him and give praise to him. I hear people, here it is, a, a tornado hit, and the only thing people worrying about is their cars and their house and material. And nobody say, oh, I just thank God I'm alive and I'm able to talk. I just thank God. Nobody cares. All they worry about material items, what they lost. It used to be a time where we just fall on our knees and say, God, I may have lost my home. I may have lost my life, but I just thank you for sparing me. Now we don't even do that. 
We go in and we say, oh, look at my car. Look at my house. God said all the time that I was trying to get my leaders to tell them the truth, to give them the gospel. And they stood up there getting this cotton candy gospel, make people feel good. Here it is. You got abortion clinics up there aborting babies and nobody's standing. Nobody's saying this is not right. Oh, man. And then I heard a man say, where all that blood from abortions of children run under that sewers cry. They blood cry say, what do we do to deserve this? And every day we walk, don't care. And they taking our babies away. They abortion our babies. They're, 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 they're killing our children. And doctrine with this, this old homosexuality and, and fornication, these these Catholic church raping children, and we're not doing it. All we're doing is slipping it under the rug. God said, my judgment is going to be swift. And it's going to be hard. I cried, man. I mean, I cried. It, it was so hard to me trying to maintain myself. I couldn't even sleep Monday night. I just laid in the bed and just looked at the ceiling. I say, God, just, just, can you please just give us another chance, God, please. And it's like he didn't want to do it, but he say, I have to. What other way can I get their attention? I done send basically every storm, everything. I mean, we had storms in, in, in North Korea, or earthquakes in, in Mexico, here in California. And we all upset about some kneeling, some football. Hey, I understand. I, I know how you feel, but God is greater than that. And then I get judged for what I stand for because I'm not for this color thing, this thing. I'm sorry, I can't. I got to do what God tell me to do. I got to share this gospel. It's my mission. It's God called me to do this. I didn't ask for this, but God said, you are called to do it. That's what he said, you are called to do this. This is your job. I commanded you, you was chosen from birth. And I look at my babies, my children, that got to come up in this oncoming world while I'm gone. And I wonder what kind of life do they have? A season where people have no regards for the gospel. A season where people don't care about the word of God. All they care about is chaos and my rights and, and what they doing and why I don't have this. Nobody, Trump, Obama, nobody can't say it was but God. And we seem to put these people up front before God. I'm just praying. I'm just praying, please, God. I'm going to tell you what we got to do. We got to repent. If, you, if you're listening to Brother RPI's testimony, what God's doing in his life, and you don't even care, there's something wrong in your heart. You see what God is doing in his people. He's stirring our hearts to repentance. It's not a game. It's not something you're going to get to do at your leisure. You better stop what you're doing and the games that you're playing with God. And you better start repenting. I mean, pouring out your soul before God and admitting to him your faults, your failures, and then turning away from them in confession and accept the blood of Jesus to wash your sins away. You have to make that decision. It's up to you. Individuals out there, don't worry about your country or your family until you get it. Don't try to give anything away that you don't even have. Do you really have Jesus? Or are you just religious? Are you just going to church? Are you living in sin and trying to act like you still have Jesus? Are you a backslider? Are you one of those prodigal sons and daughters who knew God, but now you've walked away and you're living in the hog pen? You know better. And God is tired of us in this nation who know better and won't do better. And when he sent us warning after warning, as Brother RPI so, so well has said, and we have neglected him, we keep on doing our own little things, and we keep on turning a deaf ear to God, and we keep giving a finger to God in his face and saying, we don't want you now, we don't want you ever. 
Go away. Don't don't bother our country. Bother. We're, we're good enough without you. We don't need you. We don't need your son. We don't need your spirit. Why don't you just go away and let us have our fun? Well, you know, when we were just a few days ago, Saturday, as a matter of fact, we seen the Revelation 12 sign come to life. It happened. Somebody says, oh, what happened? Nothing. Oh, the sign happened. It was there in the sky. That's right. It's recorded by NASA. The, the planets were aligned. Everything was just as it says in Revelation chapter 12. And everything is happening now. It's not only just started now. It started a long time ago. That's right. But we're just now starting to feel the effects because we have failed to repent. And these effects are going to get worse and worse like a woman given uh, birth to a child. The pains get closer and harder as the time comes. And when that child is even birthed, it says in uh, Revelation chapter 12 that there is a dragon. It's the other sign in verse 3, chapter 12. The other sign appeared in the heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and drew them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Mm. So this is the demonic realm coming to your house and they're going to destroy. They're going to devour. They're going to take your loved ones. That's Don't right. you understand that the punishment and the judgment of God is not about your money. It's not about your cars. It's about your life. It's about your soul. Millions of people in this country are fixing to die. Do you understand when the judgment of God gets to the level that it is and he's took away our finances and he's took away our liberties and he's took away our protection? We haven't won a war since World War II. We can't win the war on poverty. We haven't no, won we the can't. war on drugs. We can't win an Afghan war. We can't win a Middle East war against a small group of terrorists. We can't do anything that will promote our country and make it strong again. Why? We're already under the judgment of God, and now God is fixing the... You're going to see things happen. God's going to allow these things to happen, and they're going to bring death to to this country. You mark the words. Death is coming to this country. That's why our heart is broken. There is, there's many good people that's going to die because of this. Many church pastors, many members of good churches, many godly saints and women, but there's going to be a whole lost world that's going to be under this judgment. And they're not even going to know what's going on. And they're going to curse and blaspheme God more, more because of the hardness of their heart. Because they will not repent. It's not that they can't repent. It's that they're refusing they, they, to they repent. Don't, they don't care. They don't care. How, how can you stop the war on drugs when we put in the war on drugs? We put it in. How can you stop the war in Afghanistan when we supplying the weapons? Y'all don't understand how close... We are a going to war with North Korea. North Korea made a they did they made a they regime say that we are ready for war. We are ready. That's what they saying. They having a a, a, a pet rally. A hundred thousand of North Korea people came there and said we hate America. We want to fight America. We want to destroy America. This is a pet rally for preparing for a war. And that's death. That's death. And War's North death. Korea has cut off. Listen, their allies are China. I read an article that they cut China off. They cut them off. They don't even want to talk to them. That are their ally. These are the people that's giving them the stuff, giving them the money, giving them their. They cut China completely off. They are in, they are bearing down and they getting ready to come over here. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody knows. Oh, so, oh, well, that's all right. Do you know if we go to war, it's going to affect us? It's going to affect us. Brother, you said something a while ago that I want to elaborate on that God told you it's coming quickly. It's coming quickly. It's coming swiftly. And when you get to Revelation chapter 12 and you see the sign of the woman and the sign of her birth, and then the dragon is there to eat up the child, all right, when it says, that was immediately after it was another sign appeared. So the woman has just given birth. So the sign continues. That's right. And this is what happens in verse seven. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And that's Satan, Lucifer. And the dragon and his angels, that's the fallen angels, fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. 
So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. He was cast where? He was cast to the earth. I want you to understand what Revelation 12 says. After the sign, there will be a, a exodus, a kicking out, a, a what do you call it when you kick somebody out of the house? It's a... Uh, Eviction. eviction they will be evicted from heaven by michael and the good angels and they are being evicted to earth now they have been in the second heaven for thousands of years and the devil the demons have are on the earth ruling and and, and running things now but when these angels are kicked out of heaven the highest, powerfulest, most demonic spirits ever made, these fallen angels, a third of them, we don't know how many they are, they're going to be, they're going to be on the earth. You hear me? Yep. They're going to be on the, does anybody hear me? The devils that rebelled have been in the second heaven. They are now getting kicked out of the second heaven, and they're going to make their abode on the earth. You think it's bad now. You think demons are making destruction now. Wait till the devils, the fallen angels, hit the scene and come to the earth, and they are mad. They are angry at who? Human. Human. And here's the thing that, that, that that's run, run through my mind. We already getting influenced by Satan now with the demons on the earth. What are these demons that are coming from above? These spirits that's supposed to come. My friend, listen, my friend Michael Davis, he God has been speaking to him a whole lot. And he said he's seen demons on the way. And I'm like, if we got demons on earth, what is coming? I mean, what, what did could, he say? He saw him coming out of the sky. He saw him come out of the sky. He said, what could be worse? I'm saying this. What could be worth what's already happening right now that can be coming here on earth? More powerful, much more powerful than demons are the fallen angels. There's a difference. I'm not going to go into demonology right now. It's not that. This is another message for you to repent. If you listen, this sign happened. Somebody says, I just don't believe it. You know what? So just stay in your doubt and your unbelief. When That's Jesus right. was born, he was born under the sign of the stars. You realize he was born under the sign of the stars. And you know what? Nobody in Bethlehem came to rejoice. Nobody in Nazareth came to rejoice. But people from another planet, well, not another planet, but far away enough, all the way down to uh, Persia. In Persia, they made that long trip. It was about two years before actually they arrived to where the child exactly. was, that where baby Jesus was. They saw the sign and they said, we have come to worship him and we have come to give him gifts. Now, wait a minute. What was the sign? It was just first in the heavens. And then they got there and they found a babe. And what's so unusual about a babe being born in Bethlehem? Nothing. Nothing so unusual about that. What made it so special was that sign in the heavens. That's right. That said, there, there's a baby being born, and he's going to rule from the throne of David. He's being born from the lion that is in the air, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's that's a symbol in the in the heavens above that's us right. that resemble that. And he, they seen it, and they come to worship him. And you would say, oh, yeah, well, it's just a child, just a normal child. What's yeah. so special about the child? Hmm. And they said, oh, his mama said she was a virgin. Wait a minute, How, they, aren't they married? Yeah, Joseph and Mary are married. And you mean to tell me she's a virgin and she had a child? What kind of sign? You making this up. Yep. Yeah, I believe you found a baby, but you didn't find no beautiful virgin who's married to a man and she's not even been touched by the man, yet she's having a child. Y'all all crazy. This sign don't make no sense. They don't. And then somebody say, oh, but wait, you're going to find out. So, and listen, 29 years later, ain't nothing changed. Nothing changed. Y'all hear me? 29 years after the, the, the sign, nothing changed. He was working as his father's helper in a, in a carpentry shop, along with his other brothers that had been born from Joseph's lineage. I'm just saying nothing changed until Jesus was 33 years old. And then since that day, nothing ever has been the same. Nothing. So you can mock this sign. You can say it didn't happen, but hey, astronomically, it happened. You that's can check the sky. It happened, happened, Jack, just like the Bible said. And if that happened and that's a fact, then the demons, or excuse me, the devils, the fallen angels are next in line to be part of the great sign. They're going to get kicked out and they're coming to the earth to make war with uh, the uh, children, children of God. Uh, that's right. They already got the people. So what do they need to make war with them for? They making war with the they, saints. They use it. Here's the thing. I, I was I was looking on the uh, 
internet, and they were showing these lights, these lights falling. that falling lights. And the Bible says Satan was uh, uh, like the falling star when he when he when he got kicked out of heaven. And they was like it's like five or six, seven lights, and when they get to earth, they disappear. Now, if Satan was a great was a falling star, what was those lights? They wasn't. They they tried to say they were asteroids. It wasn't no asteroid. They, they couldn't explain it. And that's all to me is I think it's demons. And Let we, me read verse seventeen. Read verse. 17. It says the dragon was enraged because he got kicked out of heaven and all his helpers there. The dragon was enraged with the woman. That's the woman who gave birth to the church. All right. That's the birth that came. It is the birth of uh, God's sons and daughters. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, brother, when you say judgment is here, it's here. The sign is here, and now the judgment is here, and the devils that were once in the second heaven are coming to earth, and they are angry. And you know what some Christians are thinking right now? Boy, sometimes I just want to reach through the radio and shake somebody. Do you know what some Christians think? I'm not going to be here, Pastor, when that happens, so I'm just not going to worry about it. Now, let, let's, let's, it you're going to be here with that attitude. Here. If you aren't repented, if you are not sorry for the sins of your family and for your own sins, you've got a hard heart, you've got a stiff neck, you are in rebellion against God and thinking religion is going to save you. Friend, you're going to be the one that's going to be left behind yeah. to go through it because you weren't trying to do anything exactly. about it. Nothing. And this religion thing, I'm just it's just disgusting. How people can take the word religion and put it into the followers of the way. Religion ain't nothing but something that's in your mind that you do every day. Have no regard from God. Have no walk with Christ. Nothing. Every day you just doing a routine. That's what religion is. And we use that. Well, I, I, my mama went to the church and my uncle. But what are you getting out of the church? Yeah. And then what is the church teaching? I, I, listen, I'm not here to beat up on the church. I'm not here to, to put the church down, but it's obvious, obvious that God is upset. Amen. I mean, you look at the birth. I mean, this earth is erupting. I mean, natural they, signs natural are in signs. every continent. They, they, they got over there in North Korea. They got a super volcano that is erupting to, they actually had to shut down part of China affair in Japan. They got, uh, 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 other volcanoes happening. Other, I mean, these volcanoes erupting. These tornadoes. We just listen. Twenty-four million people in the Virgin Islands and the Cayman Islands had evacuated because it was inhabitable in their country. Twenty-four million people. It's probably a thousand. About twenty-four means about all of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> twenty-four thousand. Twenty-four. They they said in the millions. Wow. Had to be evacuated from, and God is steady doing. It. And all we said, well, this is much. I'm, I just wish y'all just take the mother nature out your head and see it. this is judgment. And God's it, doing this. Yeah, God is doing this. God Why? is because allowing this to happen. He is tired. How long do he have to sit up here and watch this world provoke him, shut him down, disrespect him, giving him the middle finger? I hate God. And here we so be so called. Super, uh, super sensitive Christian supposed to be up there sharing the gospel. Like, well, that, that's all right. We letting the world come inside the church. A friend of mine said forty years ago, Islam didn't want to be a part of the United States. They didn't want to come to America. Why? Because we were strong then. We were standing on the word of God. Then now they come in here and they trying to take over. And they will. And they will. Because we are so weak in our faith. It's Satan, judgment. Satan knew he didn't have no power. He knew he wouldn't come in. Yes, oh, oh, oh yeah, we had, you know, it, it was things that would happen. It was, it was segregation and hatred. Yeah, that was happening. But the people of God kept Jesus in their heart. I, I asked me, would, 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 would racism ever change? In my heart, no, I don't. Until Jesus Christ come back because men are so wicked. Yes. They Only so, a regenerated heart can go without living a they life of are prejudice. So wicked, and that is one of the tools that Satan is using to distract us, to keep us down, to keep us apart. Because we don't want to come together. We more concerned about what happened to Sister Lollipop down the road with her husband than concerned of praying and help Sister Lollipop down with her husband. We so concerned about how she did this, what he said to her, little child, even to leave. Instead of we praying. Get a good, let's get together and do a corporate prayer. You want to change America? 
Instead of protesting, get out there and pray. And help somebody. And help somebody. Pick somebody up instead of just analyzing their situation and then talking about it behind their back. Get out there and help people, love people, bring people to Jesus because they're hurting. And if you will love them, many of them will come to Jesus. I say this, and I'm going to say it again. The two greatest command, commandment that the disciple asked Jesus, he said, love the God with all your mind, all your heart, all your soul. And in, in another great commandment, love thy neighbor as thee love thyself. You cannot have hatred in your heart if you're saying you love your neighbor. Love that. that was the second greatest commandment because God know in this time of affliction that our neighbor, our brother, sister Christ, we, we had need time where we lift each other up and we can't even lift. We so busy putting each other down till we forgot about what's way is going up. One thing that David Wilson said that was so powerful. When you lose the fear of God, you got to create a gospel for inconvenience. Means that you got to create gospel to, to make a person feel good because you don't talk, you don't took the fear out of God. One of the biggest problems in this country is we lost the fear of God. We have no regard for God. We don't even care. There used to be a time when we used to say something. Oh, Lord, I say, I'm, I'm saying your name again. Now we say that and, and other things to Jesus, his name. Yeah, because without fear, you're not going to come to God. Where there is no fear of God, there is only a worship of self. And when you begin to worship self, you make self your idol and self is God and selfishness just takes over your whole mind. And no, you're not afraid of God. You don't even think he exists anymore and that he's old fashioned. And if he does exist, he's going to understand how you feel and how you were confused. And he's just going to overlook everything in your life so that he can let you into his kingdom. That is a lie. You need to wake up and smell the coffee. Some of you need to shake yourself and start repenting because until you start repenting, you repenting, you're not even going to understand this dire circumstances you're under. That's right. Until you start on the right journey back home, you got, you don't understand how soiled, how filthy your garments are from wallowing in that uh, hog pen. You don't see the strength that sin has in your life and your mind and your emotions until you try to get free from it. Yeah, go ahead and try to end that adulterous relationship, that fornicating lifestyle, that hard rock music, them drugs. Go ahead and try. Keep and trying. See, see if you can do it without Jesus. You can't do it. You, can't you already it know you can't do it. And yet you won't turn to him for help and cry out to him and repent for doing those things so he can rescue you. Friend, this ain't a game. No, it's not. The game is over. I, I, me, me, and we I, lost. We lost. And I don't care what y'all think about me. I do not care. I don't care because I'm for the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's my focus. You can call me all the names you want. You can say what you can't say about me. I do not care because I don't have to answer you. I have to answer to God. I'm getting sick and tired of people always just hating so much. And then they call themselves believers. You can say what you want. You can put me down. You can bash me. But you cannot bash my relationship. You can't take my relationship with God. You can't beat my relationship because it's always going to be because I am about the kingdom. Don't come to me with all that junk and all that, that garbage you got. God, I mean, man, I, I see people, good or bad. I see their spirit. I didn't ask for this, y'all. I did not. But God put it in me. And I'm not going to disrespect or disobey God. All I'm trying to do is let you see the Christ, the most high. I want to see everybody. I know everybody ain't going to go to heaven. But my heart is to, to preach, to share the gospel, to help people. Man, people out there hurting. They hurt. I had a young lady, man. She was about to break down crying because of what she was going through. And she said, please pray for me. Please. Yes. I need your help. Please pray for me. Yes. And my heart reached that to My wife was witness to that. Yeah. People are hurting. They're hurting. People are, are terrified. They tired of it. every day. They fight. They sick and they tired of going through this. They tired. They want. They want deliverance. They want to be free. And if we, the Christians, the believers in Christ, can't do it, who gonna do it? So we already seen what our government system doing. We already seen what our president doing. We already seen what the Democrat Republican go. Only Jesus can save you. Amen. There's a lot of people want to come up to us and they want to say. Well, what do you think about, and then they've got their little pet peeve topic they want to talk about and get our opinion on. I don't care about your little pet peeve topic you want to talk about. I don't care about a lot of things that's on the media and they're just drumming up your emotional responses. I don't care about that. I want to know, have you repented? 
Have you got on your knees? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? Are you sorry for the stupid things and the foolish things you've done in your life that has marred your testimony, that has wrecked your life, stole your finances, driven your husband, your, your, your wives, your children away from you? Are you sorry yet? Will you repent now? Will you change your life now? Will you turn it over to God and let him begin to take that broken heart and begin to fix it the right way? Are you still going to plow going the wrong way and you know the end of that road is eternal torment? Are you really, really, you just going to keep going that way? Are you just going to keep going to the same dead church? Are you going to keep wishing things would get better and you're going to have somebody come pray for you, but you're not willing to repent and change your own life? Are you really going to keep going that path? We got to call her. This is 99 point live. Nine, you're live on air. Question or comment? Uh, question. Mm-hmm. Good evening, Brother Pat. Hey. Good hey. Evening, Pastor. Um, my heart's breaking right along with y'all because I'm seeing the same thing y'all are seeing and I'm getting the same kind of feedback that uh, y'all are getting from people. Uh, they, they don't want to face every day because it's so rotten and miserable and they they think like if this is life why am i here and they don't realize that uh when you follow if you when you walk through the door and play in the playground of the devil he gives you everything you want so you have to ask yourself uh, am i miserable because i want it or should i be living another way um i want to give you a scripture and pastor hall you have to forgive me i don't remember which book it's in but i know that you and brother pat will know it there are a couple of verses where god or paul writes about the seven things the six things that god hates and the seventh thing is an abomination uh that's in proverbs uh, I just heard it again the other day. Mm. He hates a lying tongue. He hates anyone who slaughters the innocent. The, the, the shedding of innocent blood, I believe, is the scripture. He hates the shedding of innocent blood. And... I wanted you to incorporate that or address that in what you're talking about because when it comes to his judgment, no matter what kind of life you think you're living or that the Almighty will understand, please know that we cannot fathom, we cannot begin to comprehend the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of our God. And to even think that we're even close to his level is absolutely absurd. So I wanted you to incorporate the things he hates. It might help clarify why judgment's coming. And I'll let you go back and uh, talk about that. And I'm really enjoying the show. God bless you both. All right. Thank you for calling in, Sister Sandy. And I'm trying to find that. Got my phone over here, but sometimes it I have to talk to it. And uh, Brother RPI, you want to pick that up? I think I'll be able to find that in just a second. If you want to start talking, and I'll try to find that scripture. But, yeah, it talks about um, – go ahead. I'll see if I can. Ten things God hate. Seven things that God hates. Seven things that God hate. <laughs> I mean, it. <laughs> I'm, 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 I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's, how much more do we God have to <laughs> say this? You know, it it <laughs> uh, right now I'm I'm just my, I'm in I'm in mourning. You know I am in mourning. I really am. I, I mean it's and it's not like nobody haven't died yet. It's just that I just see where this country is going, and, and I'm not and I'm not, and I'm not talking about Asia or China or Russia or, or Budapest or Africa. I'm talking about here in America. And this is the way it's going. It's just like uh, it says in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. Uh, This is the scripture that Sister Sandy was looking for. Mm -hmm. It says, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. That's right. A proud look. Boy, is that not here? Aren't we proud of every sin that we've ever committed? Aren't we going to just stay hard-headed and go forward as a rebel until we die? It says, 
a proud look, a lying tongue. <laughs> lying. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. There's enough of that for everybody. That's right. Lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. Abortion. Mm -hmm. But not only that, the rape and the killing of these children for for, for uh, uh, the pedophilia. Mm -hmm. pedophilia. I mean, Pizzagate. Yeah. Look, at this is it's being sh pushed back under the rug again. It, it was in the forefront for a while, but now they're trying to forget it. But it's still here. It's still real. And the rings are still going. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Goodness. And boy, isn't that way people think, how can I get oh, rich? How can man, I rob? Pastor, you, how can mm, I get my drugs? Mm. How can I get that girl? How can I get that man? How can I have this? And it's all about mm, my plans. Mm, what a, mm, mm. a heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift to running to evil. Mm. People going and doing what they want to do and know it's wrong and know swift to wrong. do it. They want to get in the party. They want to get drugs. They want to have their uh, sexual uh, fantasies. Mm -hmm. A false witness What's who speaks name? lies. A false witness who speaks lies wow. and one who sows discord among the brethren. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like America. Sounds just like America. And God said, I hate them all. They're an abomination to me. So we have abominations and we praise these attributes in people. We Thank look you. at people and we say, oh, yeah, look at all the things they got. They're rich. They're famous. They're movie stars. They are made their money singing. They made their money in Wall Street. Well, t so what? What would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lost his own soul? Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? And many that are doing all of these exchanges, this is all they get, brother. Mm. This is all you get when you sell out to Satan. Wow. And in the end, you get eternal condemnation in hell. And there's no escape the pain. There's no escape the torment. And you live the lie all your life. You love the lie every day you lived it. And you thought that you were the king of the world and that you was never going to answer. But answer and judgment day is here. Yes. Now, it what is. are you going to do? You're going to keep going your old hard-headed, stubborn way. I'm talking to church folk. Now, I'm not talking to the world. I, are you still going to be religious and hard-headed and won't soften your heart before God? You're still going to refuse to heed the voice of the Savior who died in your place? Friends, it's time to get out of this mess. It's time for you to surrender your life and repent. And you, many of you are just going to wait till it's too late. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell them right now, Patrick. A lot of them just going to wait till it's too late. Yeah, that's what they're going to they do. They think it's a game. They say, oh, when I start seeing the real signs, you've already seen the real sign. What you're going to see now is real judgment. And it's going to come swift and fast. That's what Brother Patrick was said. That's what I've been showed. That's what the prophets are saying. And that's it's what, going to happen so soon and so sudden. You're going to be dead in eternity before you think about repenting. Brother, I don't listen to many people. I don't. I don't. I really don't. I, I, I try to stay in the word of God and, and, and get the problems mm -hmm. there. But I just, when I, 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 I got on YouTube and I would listen to different, man, I listen to three or four pastors. They saying the exact same thing. I mean, what more? And then we get up here and get this so-called man that's saying, oh, the world is going to end and prophesy when the Bible said in, 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 in Luke 21, don't be deceived. And men of them say, I am the faith. And they prophesy saying the world goes in and the world, everybody going crazy. But here's the funny thing. When they asked him, when they wanted to interview him that Friday, you know, he said, well, I can't interview right now. I'll talk to y'all next week. Wait a minute now. You yeah. say the world going in? Why you, why you going to talk this next week the world going in? That's and funny. everybody sitting up there worrying. And I didn't worry about that thing to save my life. No, I wouldn't worry. And these people go around here calling themselves they the Christ and all that. And we sit right there and follow them. Instead of getting on you, listen, you want God to speak to you, pray. Spend time with God. He will. I told y'all from the past month, I could never speak and pray in English. It's always in tongues. Always. Because God said, I want to talk to you. I got something I want you to tell the people. He know I got a voice on the radio. He know I, I minister in churches. He said, I got something I want to share with the people. And I'm going to tell you. And it hurt. Man, listen, it's pain. I don't, I don't get joy out of this. I don't feel good. This is like, a, like somebody just taking a knife and just digging it in my heart. And it hurts. And the only way out of it is to repent. Repent. That's we got to close the show. You know, we need to close this show down. <sighs> Praise God. And you know what? Jesus is coming soon, you yes. guys. 
and you need to repent. So why don't you take the next few moments after we just get off the air here, just cut your radio down. You can go ahead and turn it off. Once you get serious with God, no distractions. Just go ahead and get your prayer closet. That's right. Or shut the door in your room or go to the bathroom, lock, whatever you got to do. But you need to get it right with God. Jesus is coming soon. Judgment is coming to your door. It's coming to your house. It's There's coming. not going to be people who escape this thing. No, it's not. I don't mean that everybody's going to die, but every family is going to be touched. Every heart's going to be broken. And you're going to be filling up the churches then. You're going to be coming to church and weeping and crying then. It's going to be too late. So it's get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Repent now. Let's go. Come on. Let's do it. Go in your room. Start praying. Ask God forgive you. This ain't. We ain't no normal radio station. We, we, ain't, we ain't trying to make you feel good and get joy. Here at WCC 99.9, we give you the voice. We the voice of truth. And that's what we try to, that's what we continue to do. That's why I stand behind this radio station so much. That's why I push it because I see the vision of what God trying to do. And we trying to get, we're not trying to get rich. Me and Pastor you don't get paid. I don't get paid for being on the radio. I take my own gas, my own money. And I come down every Tuesday and Saturday with my bishop and I pour my heart out. Pull my heart out, trying to reach out to get right, turn yourself from your wicked ways, get saved, repent, repent, repent. You know, I can stay home and spend time with my family, with my wife. Even my wife knows she said, baby, I know this is what you the calling that God called her to do. And I don't mind. She it, it be it could be a lot of I can spend time with my children. I got my 14-year-old son, Patrick, I can do a lot of things with because he needs his father. But God gave me a voice. God get put me in the position to give this to y'all because we love y'all. Amen. We got to go. And we want to thank all of our listeners for listening to 99.9 WUCC. We are the voice of truth, and we do sincerely care about your spiritual condition. We want you to make it when Jesus comes, and we want you to know who he is. He is worthy of your life and your praise. So we will see you next Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, for our program. For In the Last Days, I'm Pastor Steve Hall saying we'll see you then. God bless.